How's it going, everybody? They are the Crystal Gems. They always save the day. We've waited two whole months for this movie. What are you waiting for? Hit play! Here's 10 things I loved about the Steven Universe movie. Just like last time, these are going to be done in no particular order. There will be some heavy spoilers incoming, so watch the movie if you haven't already. And yes, I promise this list will consist of more than just musical numbers. Even though a lot of them were freaking amazing and could probably rank up there with some of the best in the series. So with that being said, let's not waste any more time and get to it. Number 1, Happily Ever After. Ah, the first song in the movie if you don't count that opening ballad, and already the film starts in my good graces. I've always had a deep appreciation for songs that reprise during different parts of a movie. It allows us to hear the shifting tones in the world and characters through music. Lyrics that once gave off a happy vibe can shift to something more dour and depressing, or vice versa. And the SU movie uses this type of song perfectly. The song is put at wide enough intervals so that it doesn't get too annoying and sounds different each time. We get a nice little recap of each character's past, which is a juicy taste of nostalgia for longtime fans, and a decent introduction for new viewers who don't know them that well. Plus it helps that almost everyone in the cast can sing, so it sounds nice no matter whose turn it is to take the mic. And of course it's this song that introduces us to the two year time skip that everybody had been anticipating for so long. Steven is now 16, the gems are getting more acquainted with life on Earth, all our favorite characters have gone on to bigger and better things, it's just really nice to see. Overall the song is deep, it's well paced, and even painfully ironic in certain scenes. It's a wonderful way to start the movie. Number 2, New Homeworld. I don't know why, but the concept of building a small area on Earth with all the fixings and comforts of Homeworld is such a great idea from many different angles. If a nervous Homeworld gem decides to come to Earth, they could start off in a place that seems familiar to them, putting their mind at ease. And then when they're good and ready, they can explore the world around New Homeworld and soak in the unique things that Earth has to offer. Likewise, humans that are not accustomed to gem culture can visit New Homeworld and start to better understand these strange alien creatures and their customs. It's like an intergalactic version of those world pavilions from Epcot, where people can get a taste of a different culture without having to spend hundreds of dollars to travel there themselves. Plus it gives our favorite builder gem plenty of busy work to keep her occupied. Alright, I'll leave the puns to her. It's a smaller part of a bigger story, but definitely one that stood out to me. Number 3, Spinel. Oh man, where do I start with this girl? How about I start with the obvious? Yes, she kind of looks like Jenny Wakeman from My Life as a Teenage Robot, everybody's already joked about it and made fun of it. In fact, it's already led to one of my favorite Steven Universe memes ever. Directory arm and extendo finger! Ah! But all jokes aside, let's take a look at how she is in the movie. And trust me, there is a lot to unpack here. Her design starts off very similar to Pink's, very bright and silly and almost clown-like in appearance. But after we find out exactly what snapped inside her, which we'll get to later, she becomes much more sinister looking. With details like dripping mascara to show all the tears she cried, the hearts on her head becoming more jagged and sharp to show how she went from huggable to hostile, and of course her heart-shaped gem turning upside down, which kind of speaks for itself. When gems reform, their new shapes often reflect the character growth they've gone through or experiences they've had, and this really shows just how much pain Spinel has endured in her life without saying a single word. That's powerful stuff. Her character animation is phenomenal as well. I love the whole stretchy rubber hose vibe she has going on with her, like a boss in a Cuphead game or something. The style not only makes her adorable and bouncy in her standard form, but incredibly threatening in her evil form. It allows her combat style to be extremely dynamic and varied, forming oversized fists, tornadoes, and other awesome attacks, which is a breath of fresh air compared to what we usually see in the show's fight scenes. And of course you have her character arc, which only has less than two hours to play out and yet was still handled pretty well. She starts off as a menacing evil villain with origins unknown, that pumps the earth full of poison and destroys the crystal gems right off the bat, already establishing her as a really big threat. But then for half the movie we get to see her as a goofy childlike innocent and we're left wondering, who the heck is she and where did she come from? But eventually Steven needs her in order to shut down the poison drill, so he gets some insider information from Pearl and learns about the perfect place to restore Spinel's memories, which leads to what's probably the best scene in the movie. Number 4, The Garden Scene. Oh boy, here come the waterworks. This is by far one of the saddest reveals in SU history, at least in my opinion. We find out during a beautifully sung song that Spinel was actually a playmate made specifically for Pink, one that she seemed to enjoy at first but eventually got bored with. 
So what did she do? Told her to stand perfectly still, hopped on a warp pad, and just went away forever. Wow. Uh, I was about to make a Jurassic Bark comparison here, but in that episode, Fry never came back for Seymour Butts because he was put on ice and physically wasn't able to. Heck, as soon as he found Seymour's fossil, he was willing to restore it at the drop of a hat. But here, Pink left Spinel behind of her own volition and just never returned for her, leaving her to sit alone for 6,000 years and never visiting or seeming to care about her at all. I hate you! I hate you! This is basically Pearl's depressing backstory turned up to 11. They were both created for the single purpose of serving and entertaining Pink Diamond, but at least Pearl was treated less like a servant and more like a friend. Not to mention she actually got a second chance on Earth when her diamond was no longer with her. Spinel got none of that, forced to wait alone in the garden with no company for years, basically being treated like an old toy that Pink left in the closet and never came back for. When somebody loved me, everything was beautiful. Needless to say, her anger and outrage are very justified. She was loyal to her diamond and true to her purpose and got absolutely nothing in return for it. Heck, if that massive message didn't go out to the garden, she would still be waiting there. She was an entertaining character already, but this cemented her as a major movie highlight for me. I hope she finds happiness with the other diamonds, because she really does deserve to love again. Number 5, The Crystal Gem Reset when I first saw that this was going to be the main plot point of the movie, I honestly got a little scared. A crystal gem version of those overdone amnesia stories where everyone forgets who they are for one episode, it's probably the most overused plot device in any form of writing. But the more I watched, the more I realized that this is actually the perfect concept for a Steven movie. First off, the side cast acting like fresh out of the box gems is just loaded with comedic potential. Like Pearl serving her um Greg universe much to Greg's annoyance, Sapphire dryly predicting an entire action scene as it slowly unfolds, and Amethyst just copying everything that Steven does since she has no clue what her purpose is at this point. Plus the other gems making one-off remarks at the situation is just hilarious. But even without the comedy, the plot point allows for a wonderful trip down memory lane as Steven attempts to get all of his friends memories back. References to past locations and episodes, songs that reflect everyone's relationships and life experiences, and overall a really nice reminder of all the adventures we've been through with these characters. Every single memory is precious to these gems, in the same way every memory we've shared with the show is precious to us, and I love how the movie reflects that. Heck, it even gives us a bittersweet example of Spinell's backstory, where we see her constantly being ignored by Steven in the same way she was ignored by Pink, leading to her finally breaking down and coming to her senses. The gem reset may have seemed like a bad idea at first, but in execution, it's an absolute feast for the feels and the fans. Number 6, Greg and Steven's Fusion yeah, you knew this was coming. You knew they couldn't have a Steven Universe movie without introducing some kind of new fusion. And what we wound up getting was... how you say... awesome? Let's start with the design. Steven and Greg's fusion, or Steg from what I've heard, is basically what happens when you combine JoJo's hair with Johnny Bravo's muscles and Elvis's rock and roll mojo. Sounds like a weird combination at first, and some parts of it are, but in general, I think it looks pretty dang awesome. Plus that extra set of arms comes in handy for playing that sweet new double neck guitar! Which makes me wonder, did the guitars fuse too, or is it just a signature item that he can pull out at will? Eh, it's just a nitpick. Second, he's voiced by Ted Neo, who I had never heard of before this, but actually has a pretty awesome singing voice. I might look into more of his stuff after this. Third, it's nice to see yet another example of how fusion can come in many different forms, in the same way that love can come in many different forms. We've seen romantic love, best friend love, and in this case, family love. Much like love itself, fusion is a very varied and complex concept, and showing us all the types that exist is really interesting to see. And lastly, the song he sings Independent Together is definitely up there as one of my favorites in the movie. Not only for the awesome rock instrumentals and well-animated recap of Pearl's memories, but because we actually get to see Opal show up halfway through the song and turn it into a duet. There's been a lot of hopeful for more Opal, including from myself, and here she is, beautiful singing voice and all. This whole sequence was just fantastic, and while the likelihood of Steg appearing in the future is unknown, he put on one heck of a debut performance in my opinion. Oh, and if you're curious about what Steg would be like on my favorite fusions list, here you go. That is all.
Number 7, the Biopoison Drill. There's not a whole lot to say about this one, but I do appreciate the inclusion of a ticking clock in the movie, creating a sense of tension and forcing Steven to restore his friends in a very quick fashion. They provide a lot of shots in the movie that focus on it, reminding us that even amongst all these happy and joy-filled moments, the world is still in peril and Steven ultimately does need to focus on his mission. It's kind of sad that a non-living machine full of death juice provided more tension in one movie than the cluster did throughout multiple episodes, but hey, it was an effective way to keep the threat level up while Spinell was out of commission. How she got hold of such a powerful device is still up in the air, but I enjoyed it regardless. Number 8. It's the true kind of love. Anyone who viewed the trailers is very familiar with this one, and its use in the movie is admittedly kinda weird at first, but seems pretty fitting if you look at it closely. It's the first song that Garnet sings when she gets all of her memories back, and immediately after she reforms, she's forced into a massive battle sequence, followed by a catastrophic event that could end a bunch of lives. In essence, it's very similar to the Stronger Than You sequence from Jailbreak, but I actually think this one is a lot more powerful. Near the end of the movie, we get a battle with Spinell, the crystal gem saving everyone from the biopoison, and Steven climbing the drill in his weakened state, all while this song is playing in the background. At first it seems really odd to play such a chill, smooth sounding song over all this chaos going on, but you need to look at everything that Steven has gone through. Saving his friends, saving the world, trying to get through to Spinell. In spite of the constant danger hanging over his head and all the stress this has put him through, his primary motivator this whole time has been love. Love pushed him forward while also helping him keep a clear head. But unlike the cliched love conquers all concept where love on its own is expected to fix whatever problems occur, here it's shown that love is not a problem solver, but a motivator. Steven still has to do everything himself and suffers a lot because of it, but love keeps him and his friends going. This song plays over this scene to show that no matter how hectic or dangerous a situation becomes, it's the true kind of love that calms their nerves and plays in their heads, reminding them of what's important. When you pair this idea with Estelle's beautiful singing, you get a number that was at the forefront of the advertising for a reason, because it truly represents the overall vibe of the movie. Number 9, Change. Wow, two amazing songs in a row, but it's for a really good reason. Similar to the power of love, change is another thing that has been extremely prevalent throughout the series. The entire cast has changed in one way or another, which has made them into better people, alien, rock things by the end of it all. And it's during this scene that Steven admits how important all his personal growth was to him. He forgot that the power to change was something he mastered way before any of his other powers came to be. And it makes sense because each of his powers came at a critical point in his life where he changed something important about himself. I'll admit that his dialogue is a little bit heavy handed with him straight up saying how similar everything is to his past, but it's this realization that helps him to return to his original state and have a big triumphant final fight with Spinell. This and the song that followed would already make the scene great enough. But then we get Spinell's whole piece on the idea of change, where she feels that the only change she's gone through is for the worst. In some ways, yes, that's true, but in other ways, not so much. If she never changed, she would have stayed a one-note obedient servant. But now she's independent enough to make her own choices, go where she wants, and use her powers for more than just clown routines. Sure, she uses her newfound freedom to become a Captain Planet villain, which is definitely a change for the worse, but I would consider at least some of her changes to be pretty positive. I'm glad that the movie showed that much like love, change is a complex thing. There will be peaks and dips when it comes to how someone changes, but you should never rest too comfortably on your positive changes like Steven did, or dwell too much on your negative changes like Spinell did. You need to take each change as it comes instead of never looking forward or always looking back. There's a lot more I could say about this whole sequence, but let's just say it encapsulates one of the show's best themes in a nice sounding song. And of course we have number 10, which is Steven himself. Steven had to carry the bulk of this movie, and I think he did an amazing job. He was stuck without his powers for most of it, constantly got physically and emotionally exhausted, had his happily ever after rug pulled out from under him, was forced to deal with the threat that he wasn't familiar with and also wasn't his fault, and had to live through a lot of the trauma he already experienced once. Throw in the fact that he was away from combat and action for a while with this whole peace between gems and humans thing, and it makes you even more impressed that he was able to handle all of this on his own. But he did it. He did it because he knew he had to do it. 
His determination and drive was just way too huge for anything in the universe to keep him down. His friends and experiences were just way too valuable for him to let go of so quickly. This whole movie was a massive test of Steven's fortitude and character growth, essentially hitting the reset button on his life and seeing if he would be strong enough to start from scratch after being happy for so long. And even though we're shown that it was extremely hard for him many times, he pulled through like we knew he would. Steven is an amazing protagonist because he just doesn't stop. He doesn't stop fighting, he doesn't stop caring, he doesn't stop trying, and he doesn't stop hoping. People look up to him both in and out of universe for a reason. And I can't wait to see what more he'll do when the show finally returns to us. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Feel free to tell me what you thought of the Steven Universe movie and what your favorite part of it was. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and I hope to see you all real soon.